day has finally come. The wait is over. Literally months of waiting. I can't believe it, guys. It's here. The Mine Lab Equinox 800, and I'm about to unbox it. Hi, guys, and welcome back to the Hidden Artifacts channel. It's been a long winter. It's been a brutal winter. Uh, tons of snow this season. I have yet to get out. Uh, and to be honest, the reason I've been waiting so long, not just because of the weather, but because I actually ordered an Equinox 800 and I've been waiting patiently for literally months for this thing to arrive and it finally showed up today. And uh, you know, the whole time that I had this thing on order, I was wondering what's in the box? What does it look like? How does the packaging look? Uh, and there's a couple videos out there about uh, unboxing, but they're pretty generic. It's more about the usability and, and the features of the machine. Uh, but I wanted to focus on more the craftsmanship, the packaging. Uh, and I'm coming from an Ace 250 by Garrett, so this is pretty much as big of a jump as you can get. Uh, I'm going from a beginner machine to, you know, really one of the best machines on the market right now. So I thought you guys might want to see a real-world, real-time opening of the Equinox 800. I hope you guys enjoy this. I sure am. It's worth the wait. I've been waiting so long for this thing, uh, and I cannot wait. So let's go ahead and dig in and see what we got. So here we go. We've got the box. It is unopened. The only thing I've done so far is to remove the shipping label from the front. You can see in the upper right hand corner somebody's written 800 and I'm guessing that's just to keep them all straight at the uh, dealer. Uh, over here I did actually purchase some additional headphones. Now I know the 800 comes with headphones in the box but they're the big over the ear can kind and I'm not really a fan of those. So I read up on a, a couple forums and some people really seem to like these uh, Sound Buds Curve from Anchor. They're Bluetooth uh, water resistant and they go behind your ear they're really unobtrusive and they should sync up just fine with the 800 and then I will be opening it up today with my Northwoods knife which I really like a lot so uh, I'm gonna get some help here so that I can have two hands free and we will crack this guy open all right guys here we go let's take a look I apologize about my finger. I smashed it at work the other day, so it looks pretty nasty. And there it is. In great condition. Not banged up at all. I don't see how that could have helped. <laughs> A tiny bit of bubble wrap. All right, get the box out of the way. And there it is. It's pretty heavy, actually. I'm surprised. I'm actually really surprised by how heavy it is. There's uh, no tape on the box, as far as I can see, so you can get right in. It does have one of these um, battery warning stickers on there. I'm pretty familiar with those from my work. You have to put those on there if it's got a lithium battery. And what do we got here on the side? We've got accessories, um, some accessories that actually aren't out yet. Uh, the smart coil, or sorry, yeah, the small coil, the large coil, the waterproof headphones, the USB charger, car charger, and headphone adapter. Um, I know it comes with most things that you need in the box already. Uh, righty, let's flip it over here. Got a full breakdown of what it can do. Pretty awesome, I'm excited to open this up. Let's take a look. All right, and inside we have a flyer, battery charging recommendations. Uh, they are recommending that you use a high performance charger for your detector. Will do. We've got the uh, carton contents and uh, it looks like there's quite a lot packed in here. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat is the packaging quality isn't stellar. Uh, it's not bad by any means. I'm not, they've got some logos here um, actually in the cardboard, but I'm not blown away per se. I'm used to like really nice packaging and, and for a machine that's, you know, just about $1,000, I would expect a little bit more with the packaging. But it's not terrible. 
take a look at the coil. Pretty standard. It has a coil cover on it, which I appreciate because my Ace 250 did not have that. And it got pretty banged up over the uh, few months that I was using it. Feels pretty good. It's sturdy. It's got a nice uh, strain relief cable on there, which I appreciate. It's got some uh, hologram stickers on there with serial numbers and all kinds of fancy stuff. So we'll set that aside. We have the Equinox 600 and 800 guide in it appears to be English and Russian. That's a really interesting choice of languages. Kind of strange. And that actually folds out. It's kind of nice. It's like a plasticky, a plasticky high-end paper. That actually feels pretty good. I feel like that's gonna last a while. I know most manuals are really cheap paper and they tend to fall apart pretty easily, especially if you uh, reference them every once in a while. This one, this one feels pretty good, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Okay, next up we have this uh, mysterious looking box. Let's take a look and see what is in here. Again, all cardboard, no um, styrofoam, which I actually do like. I think that's a good touch because I know a lot of cheaper stuff, they just cram it full of styrofoam and I always feel guilty about throwing it out. Um, this looks to be fully recyclable. Uh, first thing we've got is the controversial magnetic charger. I know some people love this, some people hate it. Um, me personally, I think it's a little gimmicky. Uh, I, I get why they do it. It keeps the water out of the, out of the unit. Um, but I feel like they could have done something where it's, I don't know, just like a, a plugged port where, when you charge, when you plug it in, cause you're not gonna be charging it in the water, obviously. Um, but it feels like a good quality cable. It's thick. It's got the strain relief on there again. Um, just a simple twist tie on there to keep it all together. Uh, next up we have another magnetic <laughs> cable. All right, we got two. And I think this one is for the headphones, if I remember right. Um, but great, if I lose that one or if it breaks, we got a backup. That's, that's actually good. I appreciate that. Over here we have, this is the wireless transmitter. And uh, that is a sealed bag. So we'll go ahead and open up that, put this to the side. And if I remember right, this allows you to use standard headphones. Uh, with the wireless feature of the Equinox 800. So you would go ahead and pop your headphones in the side there. Uh, I guess that's just a little thing to keep water out maybe. And then this would, you know, go on your belt or uh, maybe your shirt, coat, whatever. And it looks like that is exactly where that magnetic charger goes. And yep, it just pops right on. Pretty simple. It's got one of those nice holographic stickers on there again we'll put that to the side that is a wm08 wireless module and it actually has power so powered up ready to go out of the box looks like it's trying to find the equinox right now which obviously it's not going to do because it's not out yet next we have the arm cuff oops dropped a screw all right, so we have the arm cuff. This feels a little flimsy, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I wasn't blown away with the quality of the Ace 250 on the Garrett. I was hoping they would increase the quality on this one a little bit. Cause I know, you know, we throw these things around a lot. We're out in the field. Um, they get bounced around. I have a feeling I'm gonna break this thing. It's just a matter of time. But I'll just keep that in mind and try to be careful about it. The bottom part actually feels more sturdy. It doesn't give as much. Um, the plastic feels like pretty decent quality, but it's just a little thinner than I was hoping. Over here, we have the arm cuff band, I guess you would call it. And that is pretty standard. It's got Velcro. The Ace 250 had the basically the exact same thing. Um, I actually use my pin pointer on this so I can actually um, attach it to this and it makes it really easy because it just rests right on your arm. Uh, you've probably seen that on my videos a couple times. And oh, we got a little screw here. Cool. Great. Last in the box, we have some covers for the screen. We've got a screen protector and that is in English. We have a little microfiber cloth, presumably to get the dust off of the screen before you apply 
the uh, screen protector. We've got one in German, Spanish, Mongolian, for our Mongolian friends, Russian, Italian, Chinese, Dutch, Arabic, Korean, Czech, French, Portuguese, and Japanese. They literally have the world covered. That is pretty impressive. <laughs> There's quite a few of those. Um, I don't know that that was 100% necessary. I feel like these are going to be all thrown out by everybody across the world except for the one they need. Um, I would have rather them see put maybe three English in the box, uh, knowing that the majority of the world is going to possibly use the English, um, and then do the rest. But I guess that's, that's up to them. Last box. There we go. And this one has some tape on it. So let's go ahead and open up that. If you guys were curious, this is a knife from a company called Northwoods. Really, really big fan of their knives. I love this knife. I've had it for several years. I'll put a link in the uh, video description to their company just so you guys can check them out yourselves. I'm a big fan. And in here, I believe we're going to have the headphones. And we've got a pretty rugged case. No logos. Just black. A metal zipper, which I appreciate. Feels like a pretty good zipper. It's going to be pretty sturdy. Um, it looks like they've got some good attention to detail here. I don't believe the zipper can actually come off because it's got a stopper there, which is good. Let's pull this around. And, yep, there we go. Okay, so we have the uh, desiccant stuff. We have the manual, thin paper manual. Now, like I said, I'm probably not going to use these headphones. I'll try them out. I'll see if I like them. But, uh probably going to be using those sound buds more than anything. Bags on each ear cup. The material on the top is pretty squishy. It's like a memory foam material. That feels pretty good. That's pretty high quality. Uh, the sides feel plastic. I don't think that that's metal. Uh, it's got three or four set screws there, so they should be pretty durable. Got a metal band for expansion. They do swivel and turn pretty well. The cups themselves aren't memory foam. That just feels like regular standard foam. Uh, they are not removable. I have a pair of headphones that you can actually pull these off and clean them if you need to. These don't appear to do that. They do pivot. Uh, on the bottom, we've got the USB charging port. There's where your cord's gonna go ahead and plug in. We've got volume up, volume down, power, and the, um, I'm guessing that's the microphone. Let's go ahead and turn them on and see if they actually come powered up out of the box. Yep, I heard a noise in them, so it looks like they do come out of the box with power, but the interesting thing is, is I don't see any lights on the side. Strange. I'll go ahead and mess with those a little bit later. Um, but it's got the MindLab logo on the side, which I, I do like, that's kind of cool. Keeps them kind of separate from other headphones you might have. And they fit really nice in the box. Over here, we've got the cable, a couple cables actually. Got a standard aux cable, gold plated. Uh, it's got a little rubber band thing to keep them together. That's kind of nice. Uh, the cable itself, nothing too special. Um, no real strain relief there. I have a feeling this cable might actually fall apart pretty quick. Um, but the good news is that it is not connected permanently to the headphones. Um, you could actually replace this if you needed to with another aux cable, but they're Bluetooth, so chances are you won't be using that anyways. And then we also have the charging cable, pretty basic USB, again, with the rubber, the rubber band to keep it all together. And that is the headphones. This looks like it comes out, which I really like a lot. That's actually kind of cool. Um, it's not stuck to the case, so you can actually position that anywhere you want. Pretty nice. Not bad. I mean, there's obviously some differences in performance between the 600 and the 800, um, the biggest being the multi-frequency range um, and some user profile settings, but these are some pretty good headphones. I would say, you know, if I were in the market for some headphones and I wanted to buy something like this and I was looking at this type of quality, I'd probably pay, I don't know, 60, 80 bucks for something like this. So it's not too bad. It's pretty good. 
The last thing we have is the actual head unit itself. I'm gonna to try to pull this guy out here without causing too much trouble. There we are, there it is. It's a little dusty from the package. Material-wise, we've got what appears to be steel. Got your plastic lock on the back. The handle itself, it feels, well, it is, it's plastic, but it's kind of a rubberized plastic, which actually feels pretty good in the hand. It's not squishy at all. No give whatsoever. Um, the bottom is a really hard plastic. This, it's got a kind of a really light rubbery coating to it. It's good for, for grip, for sure. The head unit itself, it looks like it has a little piece of plastic. There we go. Over the logo, Equinox 800. Around the sides, we've got another one of those holographic stickers. We've got a little port for your headphones. Um, there is your magnetic charging connector. Got the speaker on the back um, if you wanted to use it without headphones. Lots of dust. And you've got your selector buttons on the side here. Now those are rubbery. You can actually feel them click. That feels pretty nice. Those feel sturdy, which I like. And there's two more on the other side as well. Let's go ahead and fire it up, if I even know how, because I don't. Maybe if I just push... Ah, there it is. Power. Let's go ahead and push that. Let's see what happens. And there we go. It's got power out of the box. It is charged up and ready to go. I believe that means that there's a connection error to the uh, coil. Coil's not detected, which is not surprising. But if you did see for a second there, the battery appeared to be two-thirds full. So if you really wanted to, I personally recommend, recommend charging it before you go out and detect. But if you really wanted to in a pinch, you probably could use this right out of the box, at least the one that I was sent. Nice. Let's take a look at what is down here. And it looks like what we're gonna have left is the two extension poles. And man, they are in there good. They're not going anywhere. Let's see if I can get these out. I don't wanna bend it. I don't wanna break my box either. Here we go. Pole number one. Now this is interesting. This pole appears, yeah, that is plastic. That is not metal, unlike the other poles. And that's your extension. That's really interesting. I wonder why they chose to do that. Obviously it's a little bit lighter. It almost looks like it is. This is carbon fiber. And you can see it on the inside there. There's a carbon fiber pattern. That's why it feels kind of strange. So that's nice. I actually didn't know that there was carbon fiber on this unit. I thought it was all metal. And I actually had heard that was one of the complaints of this unit was that they had decided not to go with the carbon fiber, unlike like the uh, CTX 3030, but this is carbon fiber. So I must have just missed that or they changed it, who knows. And then the other pole is metal. So it's really interesting that they decided to do two of the poles in metal and one of them in carbon fiber. That's interesting. One big piece of controversy that I know people were uh, kind of upset about on the forums, and I don't know if I believe it or not, is that um, apparently, and I'll find out on my unit here in a second when I, when I assemble it, if you don't tighten this down the right way, it can actually shake and wiggle a lot. And a lot of people were not happy about that, especially for being such a really you know, expensive machine. They expect it to be rock solid. My ACE 250 wiggles constantly. Um, I mean, just detecting with it, it knocks back and forth pretty bad. So for this one to do something like that, I would actually be really surprised. Um, I think that just might be some people not putting it together correctly uh, or reading the instructions to the degree that probably should to make sure that it's gonna be in there nice and tight. But we'll find out here in a second and see if that's a problem with mine. And that's it, guys, there it is. There is the Mine Lab Equinox 800 out of the box. I'll make sure to do some nice close-up shots so you guys can see everything. So far, pretty impressed. I can definitely tell this thing is gonna be very light. Um, I am used to a detector that is really pretty heavy. It's pretty bulky. It's got a bunch of batteries in it. This has some weight to it. Um, I would say it's maybe half a pound, but it's not bad. It's really not. It's really, really light, and that feels really good. So carrying this around all day, no problem at all. And that screen is gorgeous. That is a really nice big screen, and I'm really happy with that. And I'll make sure to get some shots of it when it's on and, and actually working 
um, before the video ends. If you guys have any questions about it, um, if you want to know more about any particular part, please let me know in the comments. I would love to answer your questions for you. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to the gentleman that I bought this from. His name is Robert Wyatt, and uh, he runs a company called Quality Metal Detectors. I'm not getting any promotions for this. I got no discount for it, but I promise you if you guys want to be treated right, Robert is the guy to do it. He's an awesome dude, very communicative, and uh, he was almost just as excited as I was for me to get this and to ship it out. Uh, so I really urge you guys, if you haven't purchased an, a Mine Lab 800 yet, to reach out to Robert. And honestly, anything. I mean, he, he has a lot of stuff on his site. Equinox 800, as far as build quality goes, the way it was packaged, there's a couple things I would have done differently. Maybe increase the packaging quality. I kind of expected a bigger deal out of it, I guess. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with the unit itself. It feels solid and I cannot wait to start using it. Thanks again for watching, guys. Feel free to hit the like button on this video, share it with whoever you'd like, especially those interested in possibly uh, switching to a MindLab Equinox 800. Uh, uh, over the coming months, I'm gonna be using this thing quite a lot, hopefully, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on how it stacks up against something like an Ace 250. Uh, I have a lot to learn. I know they're just wildly different machines, and I have a feeling for at least the first couple of times out, I'm gonna be really frustrated by it. But uh, you know what? I've only been doing this for about a year now, and um, I still have a lot to learn anyways, so I'm not above starting over again. Uh, I'm just gonna dig everything, see what comes up, and uh, we'll see what we can find this year. Can't wait to go out there and start digging. Thanks again, guys. See you next time.